this video is to give you some tips and techniques on using your Astron Stobsonian telescope. All the accessories for your telescope come in two standard barrel sizes, uh, a two inch or a one and a quarter inch. And supplied with your telescope are two eyepieces, a two inch 30 mil uh, superview eyepiece, which is a wide angle eyepiece, and a standard uh, nine millimeter super plossal eyepiece, like that. Also in the box is a 35 mil extension tube, which we'll show you the use of shortly, and a battery pack for the fan at the base of your telescope, which we'll talk about more later on. So on your telescope is a two inch uh, Crayford focuser with a 10 to one micro adjustment on, and it has a one and a quarter inch adapter on. So you can use it with both two inch and one and a quarter inch accessories. On the underside of the uh, focuser are two screws. Normal operation, the top screw will be in, the bottom screw will be out, and the focus will wind in and wind out as required. On the side is the micro focus knob for fine adjustments, a 10 to 1 ratio. If you have both screws in, it will uh, lock the focuser in place, so as you turn it won't go in and out, and if you have both screws loose, the, finer, the focuser will be loose, which may be ideal for when you're travelling with it. With the screws, just screw them in until they hold. There's no need to put them in tight. Uh, for the one and a quarter inch adapter, just unscrew and this will come straight out, leaving the two inch barrel. To insert your eyepieces, so first of all we'll use with the two inch eyepiece, take the caps off your eyepiece, keep them handy, the eyepiece can slide in, lock it, and the focus can wind in and out to focus. If for some reason you're winding all the way out to focus and you can't quite get it in focus, that's when you can also use the extension tube to go in between the focuser and the eyepiece. Or as an alternative, you can also just not fully insert the eyepiece, like so, and will achieve focus. To change eyepieces, say to our 9mm eyepiece, take the focuser out. Now we're going to use the one and a quarter inch adapter. For this one, you twist the top. Some older models have a screw on the side instead. The current ones are twist. And the same thing, take the eyepiece out of off its covers, insert the eyepiece, twist to lock. The adapter can go into your focuser, like so, and line to focus. The art form in using your telescope is to be able to do those changes while not bumping the telescope at all, so you stay fixed on the same object. Whenever you're not using your eyepieces, put the covers on to keep the dust off. If for some reason Uh, there does get to be some dust or dew on the uh, eyepiece. If dust, just blow it off rather than wiping it off. And if dew gets on the eyepiece, again, never wipe it off. You want to evaporate it off. So take the eyepiece inside, in front of a uh, warm heat or a hairdryer, and you can evaporate any moisture off. If you wipe the surfaces, you can, the dust can scratch the optical coatings inside and degrade the quality of your view. So to look after your telescope, the most important part to protect is the optics. When you take the cover off, you'll see inside is the primary mirror of the telescope. And that's the part we want to keep clean because it's the main, the most important part of your telescope for gathering light. Now if a little bit of dust gets on it, it's not the end of the world. But the more dust um, will degrade the image. Uh, the mirror can be uh, taken out and cleaned, but do this under advisement only if you know what you're doing, because any damage to it will degrade your view. The safest way is when you're not using a telescope, when you're not viewing, is to keep the dust cover on. When you're not using the telescope, the best way is to put the dust cover on to keep the telescope mirror clean. The cover will plug in, and the same thing, we take your eyepiece out, 
don't leave the eyepiece in the telescope, you're not using it. Put the adapter in with the dust plug to keep it safe. And you'll see the finder scope also has its covers on, we're not using it. At the base of the telescope, underneath the mirror, is a fan. It's optional whether to use the fan and the telescope includes a battery pack uh, run by AA batteries for that. Uh, the purpose of the fan is to cool the mirror down uh, when you first use it. This will get the mirror to its optimum uh, shape to get the best views. However, in New Zealand with its very tepid climate, uh, we find you don't really need the, uh, to use the fan that much. Just being outside for half an hour, the telescope will cool down anyway. Uh, if you're not sure, try it with without and see if it makes a difference for you. So, for normal operation of your telescope, the telescope moves on two axes. The azimuth, which is left-right, and altitude, which is up and down. The unique tension system makes that very smooth to use. So you can turn the knob to release tension, or tighten the knob to add a bit more tension. And you just have to add enough tension so the telescope holds easily. You don't have to turn it up very tight. For normal operation of the telescope, you'll find the object first in your finder, because that sees the wide angle of view, and once you put it in the crosshairs in the middle of the finder, uh, the object should be in your eyepiece, ready for you to focus. So we're going to point and shoot, line up in our finder, put it in the crosshairs, and then look through at our object. It's when you first go outside at night time uh, and it's getting dark, is to just check, double check, the finder is lined up with the telescope that hasn't been knocked out at all. And the easiest way to do that is just find any bright object, the, a real bright star, point it at the finder and double check that what's in the middle of the finder is in the center of the eyepiece. If it's out, it can be frustrating to find objects. So when we first use the, the telescope after it's assembled, we need to align the finder scope to the main eyepiece. Normal operation, you'd find it in the finder first, and then you look at the object through the eyepiece. But we're going to do this in reverse. Um, a couple of tips is find an object on the horizon uh, that's several kilometers away, uh, so you don't get any parallax problem. And make sure you're doing it uh, in the when I mean, you're doing it in the daytime. Make sure you do it away from the direction of the sun, so there's no chance of sunlight coming into the telescope for safety. Where we use the, for this we're going to use the low powered wide angle eyepiece, our 30mm SuperView eyepiece. And even out of focus, we can tell the difference between the sky, blue sky, and the ground. So we're going to look through the eyepiece like this, going down, down, down with the te telescope until we reach ground level, maybe a tree line. Once we've found that tree line, we can focus it and we can move along the tree line or ridge line until we find the object we want to look at. It could be a tree, it could be a building, anything that's easy for you to identify. Once we've found it in the main eyepiece, then we can adjust the finder scope to match that. And when you look through the finder scope, there will be a pair of crosshairs and we're going to use the two adjustment screws on the side and the top. So looking through and adjust, just to match. So, and a back and forwards to check so that what is in the centre of the eyepiece will be in the centre of the crosshairs. Then your finder is aligned to the telescope and it does pay to double check when you're observing uh, each, of each observing session that it is still lined up. If you're using a finder scope, uh, if you need to change the alignment you can do so with the two adjustment screws. There's a spring on that side to hold it in place. Um, and to focus the finder scope, at the top end uh, there is a lock ring. You can undo the lock ring. Twist to focus, and then twist back to lock up. Focus, because we're looking at it in the sky, everything will be at essentially at infinity. You should only have it to focus this once. It will stay in focus. So when using a telescope in the New Zealand environment, one of our problems can be uh, dew. If your surfaces do get dew on, and the finder scope is probably the first thing that appears, then maybe the eyepiece. If your finder scope does get dew on, um, you don't want to wipe the dew off the surface. Wiping can scratch the optical coatings and degrade the image quality. Um, you can drop the finder scope out, take it inside, wave it in front of a heater, or evaporate the dew off. And the same with the eyepieces. Uh, however, an easy solution to this is to make yourself a dew cap. You can make yourself a permanent dew cap with a piece of foam and Velcro, 
or you just make temporary ones like I often do. Get a piece of paper, a couple of sheets of A4 paper. You can wrap it round the top of the finder scope, basically creating an extension of the tube. Tape it up and you have an instant dew cap that any observing session uh, you can just take off and dispose of. So for safely storing your telescope, uh, make sure you put the covers, dust covers on to keep the dust out. And same with the finder scope. Uh, the base of the telescope is just basic MDF timber and make sure it's stored in a, in a dry place. If it does get uh, wet under the viewing session with dew, uh, make sure it dries off uh, before you store it away. And the same with the optical tube. If it, is, it does have dew on it, dry it off and store it in a dry place to look after it.